In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can make your own division plate that replaces this threaded rod in my ultimate box joint jig. It also works in the, exactly the same way for my advanced box joint jig, which is smaller than this. You're going to need a few things for this. First up is a table saw sled. The bigger the better. I've got my big one right here. If you don't have one of these, I highly recommend building one anyway because it's super handy to have around the shop. I don't use mine very often, but when I do, it really comes in handy. And there are plenty of examples online that you can copy. I've also got mine on my website and there are also a couple of videos you can watch on it. And the link to that is in the description. You're also gonna need a hardwood blank to cut the part from. I'm using softwood here just because this is a demonstration, but I recommend using the hardest, uh, densest wood you can find. In my case, I would probably use maple if I were gonna use this for my jig. I would avoid using something that's got a really open grain like oak because the individual slots can chip off a little bit more easily. The jig uses a one inch threaded rod, so you'll need to cut this one inch square. I also cut it about 20 inches long. You wanna cut it longer than the final length, which is 18 and a half, and that gives you some leeway to, to uh, trim it down to size afterwards. After I got the rod cut to size and ready to go, I drilled a small pilot hole very close to the edge, and then I drove a drywall screw part of the way in. The first time I put the screw in, it wasn't as close to the edge as it needed to be. So I had to re-drill it and drive it again. And that puts the head of the screw out past the face of this. The head of that screw has to lock into the thread rod, which I'm gonna put on the table saw sled next. First thing I did was put some masking tape right on the sled and that'll stop the hot melt glue from sticking to the base of the sled. And then I positioned the blank in place up against the back fence and pushed the thread rod up to it and made sure that it engaged with the screw on the end. Then I could squeeze out a healthy dab of hot milk glue. And before I moved on to the next one, I let that first one dry so it wouldn't move. Now that alone is all you actually need to do to get this to work. But I find it helpful to have a guide on here. So I took my steel square and I taped that down to the other side of the sled. And that way I can line the marks up with the square as I'm moving the rod across and making the cuts. The blade I'm using in the saw is a seven and a quarter inch thin kerf saw blade, the one you would normally use in a handheld circular saw. I'm using it here because it is a thin kerf. Also, having one of these blades to use with that jig is a good idea anyway, because it will cut that 1 16th of an inch box joint that you may or may not use, but it's handy to have. Now this is sticking up too high. I just want to lower it down until it's cutting about an eighth of an inch into this piece of wood right here. Okay, now that I've got all the details covered, I can start cutting. I'll go into the procedure. The first thing you want to do is position your blank in the correct place. That should line up at the end of the square. And then you want to clamp the end here with your fingers so that you're pushing the screw into the threads. It's important that the head of the screw fits tightly in the threads of the threaded rod. Then you hold it down over here, push it through, make a cut, and then you'll move to the next position, which will be a quarter inch away, or four threads on the rod. You won't have to count that. That's what the uh, square over here is for. You just line that up with each mark as you move it through. It's worth mentioning that this part that you're making here has to be precise. And if you are using this method to do it, it's guaranteed to be that way as long as you take your time and do it correctly. This is not a race to the finish. You don't want to rush this. You want to take your time and make sure that you do this correctly. If you mess this up, redo it, start again, you know, slow down, whatever it takes to get this part right because everything that you do after with the jig will be dependent on this part and how accurately it's made. Okay, I'm coming up on the end. The final few cuts. I know when to stop because I've already made a mark on the rod 
which is around 18 and a half inches from the end. I gave it a little bit extra, actually. I made it 18 and 5 eighths. That way I can position the rod correctly in the jig when I'm building it and then trim off the ends after I'm done. Okay, well that was the last cut. I actually went past my line a little bit. The important thing is that you have enough here and that you don't cut into that screw that's screwed into the end. And that's why you want to leave it long like I did here. Next thing I can do is take that screw out and while I'm building the jig, like I said, I'll be able to position this correctly, leaving it long, and then mark it and cut it to the actual length so it's flush on the end. So anyway, I hope that was informative to people that have bought the plans and are planning on building the jig. You can save some money, definitely, and some time and messing around because one inch threaded rod is not as common as the other sizes. You'll have to, you know, hunt for it. And this is a, a perfect alternative, actually. And this quarter inch spacing here is exactly right for the one eighth of an inch box joints that you would cut with the jig. If you're interested in building this jig, there are plans available. There's a link in the description that will take you right to the sales page where you can buy them.